and uh, uh, may I now request Dr. Uh, Srisha Kumar sir to please uh, walk up to the dais and uh, deliver his talk for the postgraduate students uh, on slit lamp evaluation techniques. Uh, the, in the same breath, may I now request uh, Dr. Partho sir, Dr. Shefali ma'am, Dr. Amit sir to please uh, honor the dais. Thank you. Audio नहीं चाहिए ना सर। Audio नहीं चाहिए। Okay. Uh, very good morning to all of you. So I am going to talk uh, on uh, the slit lamp evaluation techniques. Uh, I think uh, most of you are uh, using slit lamps. Maybe the first year PGs who have just joined may not be uh, knowing about the uh, instrument, but uh, uh, that is the basic instrument, uh, the first instrument uh, one should know. Uh, uh, one enters into ophthalmology residency. That is the first instrument uh, they have to be familiar with. Uh, so uh, it was uh, in the year 1911, uh, Gullstrand, uh, who designed the first slit lamp with the facility of uh, focal illumination using a slit lamp, uh, slit aperture. And he received Nobel Prize for this uh, innovation. And that is the first uh, uh, Nobel Prize for ophthalmology. Any physician, uh, ph physicist, or uh, uh, ophthalmologist getting a Nobel Prize for uh, ophthalmology that is the first one and uh, so what can we uh, use uh, slit lamp for so it's for our uh, routine examination of the anterior segment uh, you can examine from lid uh, adnexa and uh, the anterior surface of the uh, sur ocular surface that is um, bulbar conjunctiva uh, palpebral conjunctiva cornea and uh, deep into the anterior chamber uh, you can uh, look at the details of the anterior chamber and uh, uh, iris pupil and uh, the lens so uh, this is uh, on its own we can use it for all these uh, examinations and uh, with accessories you can use it for gonioscopy fundoscopy ocular photography contact tonometry uh, and uh, pachymetry uh, corneal sensitivity that is estheometry uh, and uh, you can use it even uh, for uh, therapeutic purpose uh, for laser photocoagulation and uh, YAG laser uh, iridotomy and YAG laser capsulotomy. So the parts of slit lamp, uh, it has got uh, three components. Uh, the first one is observation system, and the second one is the illumination system, and uh, third is the mechanical system. Uh, so the observation system, uh, it includes the compound uh, microscope, this is the illumination system, and uh, the mechanical support you have, the chin rest, headband, and uh, joystick to move the slit lamp uh, uh, forward backward or uh, on either side and uh, this is a just a, a video showing different parts of uh, the slit lamp uh, mechanical system uh, the illumination system here and observation system and uh, coming to the mechanical system uh, uh, you have a, a switch uh, to uh, switch on the senior power uh, connection um, <clears throat> and you have a joystick to move this little lamp uh, forward backward or up and down uh, and uh, this is the uh, uh, the patient uh, a chin rest here and this is a headband here and you have a canthal alignment marker here and uh, so this is a target a fixation target a canthal alignment marker chin rest and uh, the knob to adjust the chin rest and coming to the illumination system this is the lamp 
housing and uh, this is a uh, aperture the you can adjust the aperture of the slit beam why uh, width as well as the height of the slit uh, uh, can be adjusted and uh, uh, these are the uh, like filters so you have a knob uh, to change the filters and has a reflecting mirror which projects the light onto the uh, ocular surface and uh, you can even tilt the uh, illumination system you can uh, decouple it and the observation system uh, you have a observation system the ip is here and uh, you have a uh, markings here you can adjust your uh, uh, IPD and then you can adjust your power if you are an emetrope you need not do anything you can uh, adjust it to zero and if you are not an emetrope you have uh, minus two adapters of uh, spherical power you can adjust it here minus two and uh, use it without your glasses or if you are a myope you want to use your spectacles you can adjust it to zero and use it and uh, these are connected by a, a tube uh, which are angulated uh, by around 10 to 15 degrees and this angulation gives a stereopsis uh, and uh, you have a prism housing uh, Yeah, this is a prism housing. Actually, uh, this is a magnification system. You can adjust the magnification and the observation lens, ob objective lens. So, uh, how to start? Uh, it should be a, a dim uh, illumination you have to examine. Uh, uh, most of the cases, like uh, uh, you can use a semi dim uh, illuminated uh, room for uh, <coughs> examining these patients. Uh, and you have to focus the IFEs, adjust your uh, uh, IPD and uh, power and then adjust the headrest, uh, position the fixation target, give a fixation target to the patient otherwise they will move around and uh, it will take uh, more time to uh, see a small uh, uh, examination to be done and uh, so start with the diffuse illumination and uh, so position the patient well and uh, uh, there's a canthal alignment marker here uh, position the patient's uh, canthus in such a way that it aligns with the canthus uh, alignment marker so that there will not be any uh, adjustment uh, taking place uh, which will take more time uh, when you are examining the patient so you have two types of uh, slit lamps which are available one is the hack strip type uh, and uh, zeiss type and uh, hack strip type you have illumination uh, uh, superiorly and in the uh, zeiss type the illumination system is uh, lower down uh, and i'm um, coming to those details so the observation system it consists of uh, uh, you have a ips here and uh, this is a prism housing and this is the magnification knob to change the magnification here and the objective lens so oh, this is the ips you can adjust the ipd initially and uh, the, uh, so observation system you even uh, uh, I'll come to that, uh, the magnification system. So the objective lens, which is around 22 diopters uh, powered lens, which contains uh, uh, two plano convex lenses uh, with their convexities uh, uh, put together. Uh, and uh, the eyepiece, uh, which has got a 10 diopters uh, plus 10 diopters of uh, converging tubes, and uh, they are converged at an angle of 10 to 15 degrees. This gives uh, good stereopsis. And a pair of prisms, actually, this compound via microscope it produces uh, inverse image uh, okay it will be reversed that is uh, reversed by these prisms which are uh, housed in this uh, uh, prism housing uh, 
and the magnification you can change the magnification of the system this bio microscope uh, there are various uh, magnification systems which are uh, uh, available with uh, uh, different microscopes uh, zapsky scope uh, uh, with the rotating objectives uh, this is actually uh, incorporated in a size uh, hack street type of uh, uh, slit lamp bio microscope uh, and uh, the next one is a galilean telescope uh, type of magnification system which is actually incorporated in a uh, zeiss type of a slit lamp and uh, here it is actually a fixed uh, uh, magnification uh, it is either uh, 6x 10x 16x or 40x so there is nothing in between you can't adjust the power in between but uh, 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 you have a zoom system uh, which is incorporated uh, in this magnification system this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, incorporated in nikon photo slit uh, slit lamp and uh, you can have a continuous range of magnification with this uh, type of uh, magnification system you adjust your ipd and then proceed uh, with the examination and uh, uh, this is actually the uh, rotating objective uh, this is a zapsky scope uh, uh, magnification system and this is actually the galilean type of uh, magnification system and uh, the illumination system uh, so this is the optics of the illumination system uh, you have a halogen lamp here uh, in the top and uh, then you have these condensing the uh, condensers condensing lenses uh, which uh, passes the beam through a variable uh, width uh, slits uh, like uh, vertically also you can change and horizontally also you can change the width and uh, the size of uh, uh, these apertures and this passes through the filters you have a variety of filters uh, neutral density filters or blue filter or a green filter and uh, that passes through a projection lens which uh, uh, passes the rays to the uh, mirror and uh, which projects the light onto the surface of the eye so these are the possibilities so you have a, a lamp house here and uh, these are all the like the height of the beam can be adjusted by rotating this knob here and uh, uh, the this thing uh, the width of the beam can be adjusted uh, change using this knob and uh, so you have different uh, uh, types of uh, uh, beam uh, profiles that can be possible with these slit lamps you can have a, a wide beam and a, uh, the full height uh, slit beam and a wide still further uh, wide uh, beam and a full height and uh, this is a diffuse illumination you can have a slit a vertical slit uh, or you can have a horizontal slit uh, with the uh, narrow beam uh, it's an optical uh, beam and uh, to start with uh, you examine the uh, the ocular index uh. so uh, ocular index uh, to check for any blepharitis or uh, any inflammation or infection of the lid margin and uh, upper eyelid then you uh, go ahead and uh, examine the lower eyelid uh, you can use a, a wide uh, slit beam or you can even use a diffuse beam uh, to do a, a thorough a general examination of the eye then the lower fornix uh, to check for any synechae or uh, any papillae and the upper fornix and uh, superior bulbar conjunctiva then uh, you evert the upper lid uh, to check for any papillae or any foreign bodies so uh, and uh, each system has its own uh, configurations and uh, uh, this is uh, from upper swami you just have to switch on the uh, instrument and then uh, uh, adjust uh, the observer and uh, this is the observer and uh, this is the illumination system you have to keep them in an angulation uh, for most of your examinations uh, usually uh, the angulation is uh, between 30 to 45 degrees 
and uh, for most of your examination this uh, holds good but for uh, very specific uh, uh, techniques like uh, sclerotic scatter or uh, for retroillumination the angulation has to be increased so you have different illumination techniques uh, that are available and uh, you have diffuse illumination direct illumination indirect illumination and uh, the direct illumination itself, direct uh, focal illumination and uh, with this you have uh, optical slit uh, beam or uh, parallel piped uh, uh, beams or you can have a conical beam and in the indirect you have indirect proximal, indirect uh, retro illumination and uh, sclerotic scatter uh, etc. So diffuse illumination, actually we use it uh, for a general examination of the eye. You can see here uh, the angulation, this is the observer system and uh, oh yeah, diffuse illumination, uh, you can see uh, diffuse illumination, you are uh, doing a gross examination, the magnification may be the minimum magni uh, magnification you can have and uh, uh, with the wide beam and uh, with the maximum height you can examine the uh, surface and the adnexa uh, for any gross abnormalities. Uh, so focus on the surface for a general examination of cataract and uh, the lid margin this you can see the woman gland uh, duct obstruction nasal uh, pterygium here and uh, nevus uh, or band shaped keratopathy or uh, the anterior chamber you can see the microspirophakia iris is here and hypermaturian uh, mogagnian cataract so these are all like uh, the gross examination you can do with the diffuse illumination uh, and uh, again uh, 30 to 45 degrees uh, so uh, this is how it is this is just a schematic uh, picture showing you can see a broad beam here a broad beam and uh, your microscope uh, here the angulation is around 45 degrees here and uh, you are going to examine the whole of the surface uh, with one go So these are all the structures you can see or the conditions you can see. Direct illumination, you, uh, you can have a direct focal illumination and uh, in this you have optic section, optical uh, slit beam uh, uh, or you can have parallel piped uh, beams or conical beam. These are the three possibilities with the direct illumination and uh, optical section is actually uh, here is uh, you are examining the cornea and uh, your uh, beam of light is uh, actually falling onto the cornea at an angle of around 30 to 45 degrees and you are focusing on the cornea. Uh, this optical section is uh, also used for uh, Van Herrick's uh, angle grading. Uh, so this is a section, optical section. Uh, and uh, but if you keep it as a wide beam uh, you will not be able to examine the uh, details of the cornea the uh, depth of uh, the uh, infiltrate or depth of the uh, this thing the lesion in the cornea but uh, the surface examination is uh, possible uh, with the wide beam if it is a moderately wide beam uh, with around 2 to 3 millimeters of width and uh, maximum height you can have some details of the ocular surface the corneal surface as well as some details of the uh, cornea like uh, it's like a histopathological section of the cornea but if you use this optical section uh, you can uh, examine the uh, cornea in detail that is the section of the histopathological it is something similar to your histopathological uh, section you can uh, uh, see the lesion the exact depth of this lesion the extent of this lesion uh, and uh, 
the the membranes like even the endothelium uh, any lesion which is extending up to the endothelium all these details can be made out uh, with this and effect of angulation whenever you are using a slit beam angulation is uh, very important uh, this is actually uh, 45 degree angulation uh, it's a balance of surface and depth you can examine the surface as well as the depth uh, of lesions in the cornea so if it is just a 4 to 5 degrees uh, you will not be able to uh, see the uh, details of the cornea only the surface details you can make out so the angulation is extremely important if it is 85 to 90 degrees depth you can uh, uh, see the corneal lesions in detail, but the surface uh, will not be examined, it is not possible. So, the angle is extremely important. Uh, so, the optical section, uh, you can examine the uh, details of cornea as well as the uh, lens, the type of uh, cataract, uh, the, uh, the amount of uh, density, the density of cataract or the uh, <coughs> opacities, where exactly these opacities are lo uh, located, whether there is any posterior uh, subcapsular or posterior capsular uh, components uh, in the cataract, posterior polar cataracts and other different forms of cataracts you can make out with this uh, slit beam. And even it can be used for uh, the fundus examination using a 90D or a 70D, 78D uh, <clears throat> lens. So you can examine disc edema or the macular edema, disc coloboma. And uh, if you keep it at uh, 10 to 15 degrees angle, it will give a, even a stereopsis and you can make out whether there is an elevation. So uh, 10 to 15 degrees you can keep and uh, for macular edema or for disc edema, it will give you a clear picture of the uh, surface of the uh, retina or uh, the disc. So, uh, parallel piped uh, uh, illumination, like uh, the direct uh, type of direct focal illumination, uh, you have a broader view with the extensive examination which is possible with this. Depth and extent of the corneal uh, abrasions or scarring or foreign bodies or any opacities in the uh, cornea can be examined. Uh, so, this is the principle of a parallel piped uh, uh, beam. So, you have a, a slightly wide beam uh, and the height is maximum. Uh, so, you can uh, examine the surface as well as the uh, cornea, uh, corneal section. So, you can see those lesions on the surface and the illumination is maximum and the height is maximum here. And even the details of uh, the anterior chamber and the lenticular details can be made out with this. So, direct uh, focal elimination, you see the angulation here, uh, you are able to make out the details of the surface, anterior chamber, you can see the coronal opacities with the direct focal uh, examination and uh, some membranes can be clearly made out. And uh, it can be used, uh, the optical section can be used even uh, for uh, grading of the angle, peripheral anterior chamber depth, PACD. And uh, you can, this is called Van Herrick's grading. Uh, <coughs> if the corneal beam width is equal to the uh, gap here between the iris and the system, there is a wide angle. If the angle, if the gap is less than the corneal width, then it is called a narrow angle. Uh, you can grade it accordingly. So, is the iris Bombay and there is hardly any gap between the iris and the corneal section. So, conical beam uh, is actually you use a high magnification and uh, uh, the beam width is minimized and uh, beam height is also minimized. But magnification and illumination should be high to check the anterior chamber uh, details. This is uh, how it is done. You have a minimal uh, width and length and the magnification is high. You can examine the anterior chamber for uh, cells and flays. This is the use of these conical beams. Uh, Again, the angulation is uh, uh, 30 to 45 degrees and uh, maximum uh, 
magnification you reduce the height yeah, you are able to see the details here as a cells and flare the indirect illumination uh, <coughs> so indirect illumination uh, again uh, you are going to examine the cornea adjacent to the uh, point of entry of light so uh, you just have to slightly decouple uh, the observer and illumination system so the angulation is around 30 to 45 degrees so your uh, optical uh, slit beam uh, it passes through the cornea and you have to examine the cornea just adjacent to the uh, beam on the cornea so this uh, gives indirect illumination uh, uh, so this is a, a diagram which shows so your uh, beam of light which goes like this and you examine here so this will give a indirect uh, illumination on the background of this uh, light you are able to examine the uh, cornea like uh, epithelial vesicles or epithelial erosions or corneal nerves ghost vessels and uh, even uh, corneal foreign bodies or nebular opacities which are difficult to examine directly so that can be made prominent by this technique and you can examine them uh, clearly retro illumination as the uh, term uh, indicates retro means uh, from behind the illumination is from behind it is either uh, from the uh, fundus that is from the retina or from the iris so uh, again uh, the angulation is around uh, uh, 30 to 45 degrees uh, uh, for indirect uh, retroillumination. For direct uh, retroillumination, it is uh, d there is zero degree angulation. So, uh, beam of light which passes, uh, which is focused on the iris, and you are going to examine the cornea here. So, you are going to uh, see these uh, vesicles or uh, the new vessels on the cornea or ghost vessels clearly. Uh, this is a retro illumination, you can see. So, there is, uh, yeah, you can see clearly this is the fundal glow uh, against which uh, you are able to see the PCO here or keratic pre precipitates here. So this is a direct uh, uh, retro illumination. So this is indirect. There is an angulation here to examine the foreign body. Coming to specular reflection, uh, again, uh, uh, like uh, uh, till now, the angulation is around 30 to 45 degrees. But uh, for specular uh, reflection, it is it should be around 50 degrees or more than 50 degrees, mm -hmm. ideally 60 degrees between the illumination system and the objective system so oh, like uh, uh, if you don't have a costly gadgets like specular uh, microscope uh, you can use this uh, technique of uh, slit lamp uh, uh, to examine the uh, endothelial uh, mosaic uh, layer and this is how it is done uh, your uh, uh, beam of light which is uh, highly illuminated there is a uh, maximum illumination maximum uh, uh, magnification and uh, your uh, uh, illumination and uh, the observation system the angulation is around 60 degrees you are examining here on the cornea on the endothelium so you will be able to uh, see the uh, uh, the endothelial details the mosaic layer of the endothelium Here, uh, it's being focused on the endothelial layer. Uh, you keep it at the maximum 16 or 40. And now, fine focus. Yeah, you, you can see the pattern here, the mosaic here. You can even make out gutte or uh, pigments on the endothelium and uh, uh, thickening of the endothelial layer here. A sclerotic uh, scatter, uh, the last two sclerotic scatter again uh, it's an indirect way of examining the cornea and uh, here you uh, focus a bright beam of light 
at the limbus and examine the uh, cornea. Here, uh, what exactly happens is, uh, it's uh, like uh, uh, there's a total internal reflection that is happening here. Uh, you focus the beam of light here at the limbus. It passes through the uh, cornea and uh, this part of the cornea will be seen as black and uh, your uh, opacity that is uh, if it is a nebular opacity it becomes prominent uh, it looks as a gray uh, opacity or whatever the gray, uh, gray lesion against that background so this is how it is so you can see the prominent uh, opacity over here So, the corneal lesion becomes more prominent if you see here. Again, tangential elimination to examine the surface. Fundus examination is possible. You keep an angulation of uh, 10 to 15 degrees uh, to get a depth perception. Uh, uh, this is mainly for the disc evaluation as well as for uh, the macular evaluation uh, with the 90D or 78D. Um, 90D, the magnification is better as compared to 78D, but uh, uh, 78D, you have a wider view as compared to 90D. So, the filters, uh, there are various filters which are fitted into these uh, uh, slit lamps. Uh, most of these slit lamps will have these three filters, cobalt blue, uh, blue red flea filter or green filter and uh, neutral density. Neutral density is nothing but uh, it is actually it reduces the density or uh, intensity of illumination. Any photophobic patients uh, like uh, the patients uh, uh, with the albinism and all those patients you can use this neutral density which reduces the illumination so that the patient will be more cooperative uh, for your examinations. So cobalt blue uh, blue filter is mainly to examine uh, even for uh, uh, testing for applanation tonometry you use it and uh, uh, for contact lens fitting you use it uh, and for foreign body foreign body uh, staining uh, corneal staining you can use it epithelial defects so uh, this is just a uh, a brief about uh, the filters and their use. Uh, the gray filters are available. Again, it decreases the maximum uh, brightness for uh, photosensitive patients. Yellow filter actually it uh, for good contrast enhancement when using fluorescent and cobalt blue filter. These are all uh, can be fitted into the standard machine, but uh, most of them come with the three standard filters. So, uh, what makes a good slit lamp? Uh, it's actually the good slit needs to be bright and it should be evenly illuminated, finely focused and have well-defined uh, straight edges. Should not be a corrugated edges or uh, <coughs> should be a uh, well-defined straight edges and uh, flexible, it should be flexible in terms of size, shape, color as well and intensity and uh, the illumination also needs to be uh, provide good uh, color uh, rendering to detect subtle uh, color changes uh, in the media so it should be like a uh, maximum uh, height of around 12 to 14 millimeters should be possible with this and uh, width also like uh, 12 to 14 uh, a millimeter should be possible and you can even uh, will be able to make it one millimeter uh, both vertically and horizontally to examine the anterior chamber details especially for flare and cells so with this i think uh, there's much more to it but uh, it's not possible to cover everything in this class um, any questions um, Yeah, uh, specular reflection. Uh, here uh, uh, we use the principle of uh, uh, specular reflection. It's actually a specular 
reflection means the angle of incidence is equal to angle of uh, reflection okay so you have a 30 degree angle and 30 degree uh, reflection angle that is around the gap between the uh, illumination system and the eyepiece is uh, 60 degrees so what exactly happens is uh, um, when you focus the light on this particular uh, structure like uh, you are examining the endothelium so you have to focus on the endothelium for that you have to use a uh, high magnification you have to use a high illumination and a narrow beam narrow beam you can increase it once you focus it okay so this actually uh, gives us the details of the uh, endothelium endothelial layer can be examined actually uh, many of them those who are not having uh, this specular microscope they use it as a mode so you can easily recognize this gut easily recognize the the posterior thickened endothelium with this particular technique and uh, uh, like uh, in a case of Fuchs endothelial uh, dystrophy, you can even grade based on this uh, slit lamp examination. It is possible with every uh, uh, every slit lamp. It is possible. 